Hey guys, today we're going to dig deeper into homeostasis and explain how it consists of two stages, detecting changes from the stable state and counteracting changes from the stable state. Just a heads up, this is a long one, so you'd better get all those toilet breaks out of the way now. Flashing back to the previous video tutorial, we demonstrated that homeostasis is the process by which organisms maintain a relatively stable internal environment. The two examples we looked at in terms of homeostasis include body temperature, where if your body temperature increases due to the hot external environment, homeostasis will work to cool it down and vice versa. And water levels in the body, or osmoregulation, where if you're experiencing low water levels in your body, your kidneys reabsorb more water to increase water levels and vice versa. Incredibly compelling stuff, isn't it? Well, it will only get more compelling from here. As we mentioned earlier, homeostasis consists of detecting changes from the stable state and counteracting changes from the stable state. This video tutorial will completely break down these concepts so it's a lot easier to understand. At the very least, you should be able to fake your way through this stuff by the very end. Detecting and counteracting changes are made up of five different features. The stimulus, receptor, control center, effector, and the response. We're going to go in depth with these five features using body temperature as our trusty example. Don't worry, this will be quick and painless, hopefully. Stimulus means a detectable change in the internal or external environment that will trigger a response. Basically, stuff that happens outside the body will affect what's going on inside. For example, extremely hot days will cause our internal body temperature to increase. Next is the receptor. Like an antenna, a receptor consists of a group of specialized cells that can detect stimuli and can also detect changes in the internal and or external environment. These are found in our sense organs. The eyes can detect light, the nose can detect chemicals in the air, and the tongue can detect chemicals in food. Going back to body temperature, thermoreceptors on the skin detect the increase in temperature. Once any change is detected, the receptors communicate this to the brain using nerves. The brain, also known as the better sounding control center, interprets the message from the receptor responds and sends a message via the nerves to cool the body down. To be a bit more specific, the control center only refers to the hypothalamus in the brain, which is in charge of homeostasis. The rest of the brain is essentially just wasting space in the context of this stuff. Once the brain interprets the receptor's message, it does something to counteract any changes. These counteracts are undertaken via the effector, which is a muscle, organ or gland in the body that carries out the body's response to stimuli. So say your body temperature is too high. The effector will send out a behavioral response telling you to strip and a physiological response telling you to sweat like a dog. The response is the resulting action from the effector. Using the body temperature example, this is the stage when you strip and sweat. The stripping is the behavioral response from the effector in an attempt to lower your body heat whilst the sweating is the physiological response. When sweat evaporates from your skin, it takes away all that excess heat. Admittedly, the smell underneath your armpits may be a hard thing to handle, but it's a small price to pay for cooling yourself down. Using all this new knowledge of stripping and sweating, let's combine it with our old knowledge about homeostasis's ability to detect and counteract change. Using a simple flowchart, the stimulus and receptor are both involved in detecting changes from the stable state. The stimulus is the change and the receptor picks up this change. The effector and the response are both responsible for counteracting the change. The effector via gland, organ or muscle undergoes an action that reduces and minimizes the change. And the control center is completely useless. Okay, that's not true although it is not directly involved in detecting or counteracting change, the control center receives the message from the receptors and tells the effectors what to do. A key term to understand about homeostasis is that it is a type of negative feedback system. A negative feedback system stabilizes a process by reducing its rate or output when the effects are too great. Homeostasis adheres to this definition to the letter by detecting and counteracting changes from the stable state. 
With a process like body temperature, homeostasis stabilizes this by reducing or increasing body temperature whenever the effects are too great. By this point, it should be pretty obvious that understanding each component of homeostasis is pretty important, at least for the next year or so. Just remember, homeostasis involves detecting and counteracting change. The stimulus and receptor detects change, the effector and response counteract change, and the control center oversees everything, like an umpire, and ensures things are running smoothly. For the home stretch, let's take all the stuff we've learned so far about the body temperature and homeostasis and apply it to that sign graph we previously used. We're only using a small piece of the graph, so there's no need to panic too much. Firstly, the start of the sign graph represents the stimulus, which is the increase in external temperature. Going along the graph, the thermoreceptors in our skin detect this temperature increase. This information is sent to the control center or brain. The hypothalamus then sends a message to the effectors telling them to reduce body temperature. Represented by the downward slope, the effectors take on the brain's instructions and carry out the body's response to lower your body heat. This response can be stripping, sweating, or vasodilation. Out of those three responses, you probably don't need us to explain what stripping or sweating is. If you do, ask your parents. As for vasodilation, that's when the blood vessels expand and allow heat loss across your skin. That's why some people get really red in the face during a hot day. The result of all this is a reduction in body heat so that your body is at optimal temperature. What about decreasing body temperature? Well, it plays out exactly the same except in reverse. The stimulus detects a decrease in external temperature. The thermoreceptors in your skin detects this temperature decrease and messages the brain. The hypothalamus in the brain sends a message to the effectors to increase body temperature. The effector then carries out the body's response to increase body heat. The result of all this is muscular shivering or vasoconstriction, which is when blood vessels constrict to minimize heat loss via the epidermis. At this point, it's probably best to get some clothes on or stand next to a heater. To finish up, remember that homeostasis is a negative feedback system that consists of both detecting and counteracting change. Let's sum up this odyssey and a half before we put this topic to bed. Firstly, homeostasis is the process by which organisms maintain a relatively stable internal environment. Secondly, homeostasis involves two separate steps, detecting and counteracting change. Thirdly, homeostasis can be demonstrated through the five-step flowchart. This includes the stimulus, the receptors that detect change, the control center or the hypothalamus in the brain, the brain telling the effector how to minimize the change, and finally, the carrying out of the response. Lastly, homeostasis is an example of a negative feedback system. A negative feedback system stabilizes a process by reducing or increasing output as needed in order to maintain optimal body functionality. Using body temperature as an example, when there is too much of an increase, this system responds by decreasing body temperature. When there is too much of a decrease, the system will increase body temperature.